Hello gorgeous peeps and welcome to yet another stiffy inducing episode of Techspert Weekly. Now unfortunately this episode is gonna prove to be rather less satisfying even than usual and that's because I am really really badly backed up at the moment, backed up with video work stuff that is not the toilet problem. Uncle Spur knows to eat his fibre like a good boy. But yeah, apologies, loads of new phones and other tech bits launching at the moment, so much like when I make sweet love, this episode is probably going to end rather sooner than expected and also just leave you feeling hollow and a bit sad inside. Sorry kiddies, hopefully I have time for a proper biggie next week, FNAF, FNAF, etc. Roll credits! Tech Spurt Weekly! Now I don't know about you guys, but certainly my favourite thing to do at 2am when my brain suddenly decides that sleep is for pussies is to endlessly scroll through my social media feeds and plunge even further into depression at the knowledge that my life is significantly inferior to that of my peers. And if you just happen to be doing that at 2am on Monday morning this week, you may have noticed that Oppo has begun teasing its fresh new Oppo Find X3 Pro, the sequel to one of the greatest smartphones of 2020. In fact, the Find X2 Pro wasn't just one of the best smartphones of 2020, it was one of the best things to happen in 2020, although it's not exactly a particularly high bar there. I think my top 10 list still includes the instance where my daughter decided to headbutt me in the balls. I think that came in at about 7 or 8. But anywho, the good news is that Oppo revealed that it plans to fully launch the Find X3 Pro on its YouTube channel on March the 11th at 11.30 a.m. UK time, so at least that's not in the middle of the bloody night. And apparently we're in for a treat, according to Oppo at least, because the Find X3 Pro will boast the clearest, most accurate, smooth and comfortable display so far, plus that beefy Snapdragon 888 chipset first found in Xiaomi's Mi 11 and yet another world-beating camera. And frankly, if Oppo can even improve slightly on the already massively brilliant Find X2 Pro, then the Find X3 Pro should be one of the most spooge-worthy smartphones of 2021. But by no means was that the last of the tech-related shenanigans and excitement this week. Oh, hoo boy, no. Just yesterday, for instance, Xiaomi launched its fresh new Redmi Note 10 Pro, which is a proper premium smartphone at a not-so-horrific price. After the rather lacklustre Note 9T Pro, Xiaomi has sorted it out and given us a 6.67 inch crotch thrust and beast packing a 120Hz AMOLED screen, a 108 megapixel camera, Snapdragon 732G smart and a mighty 5000mAh battery. This phone is certainly shaping up to be something very special indeed and for the price of just one of those crappy iPhone thingies you can get like two or three of these and still have enough change in your pocket for a six pack of special brew. Proper no brainer that. And if all of those saucy specs have made you massively moist then good news my Xiaomi Redmi Note 10 Pro unboxing and full tour is live right now on Tech Bird, and I'll be following it up with a full review. My sim is slapped inside this bad boy right now, so look forward to that start next week. And now it's time, regrettably, for the part of the show that brings my hives out in hives. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. Okay, where are we starting this week? Let's start with uh, Jowny K, sorry if I uh, pronounced that badly, uh, says, give money to charity, not drink alcohol, it's poison. Well, yeah, that's probably quite a sensible viewpoint to take, I guess, but an alternative viewpoint might be that life itself is the poison and alcohol is the antidote. Ah, ha, ha. And in fact, I'm pretty sure that most medical practitioners would agree with that way of thinking as well. I'd say probably 98, 99% of doctors. And in fact, all of the doctors that I've known in real life have been massive pissheads, so there's got to be something in that. And next up, Wade Van Starden says, posh, question mark, question mark. And then there's just lots of the little crying, uh, laughing emoji things. Do I, mean, do I mean to take it that you are suggesting I'm not posh in any way? Come on, man, I can mix it up with those upper crust genteels when I need to. I can hold in my farts at dinner and use the proper fork and, uh, yeah, that's probably about it, actually. Oh, I can drink a port instead of a, instead of a beer. Uh, Dewan Joel clearing up something from last week. Uh, for Dags, who's Miss, uh, Swedish for something. Apparently, it's, it's Swedish for Cozy Friday at Home. They then expands on that. Cozy Friday eating potato chips and watching TV. It's a Swedish tradition. Really? You jammy bastards. Why don't we have that tradition? That sounds freaking awesome. You spend every bloody Friday working. Or at least pretending to work now that we're in perpetual lockdown. Uh, next up, Patrick says, peeing on a train. How about throwing up on a train? Thank God you could still open a window when it happened to me. Uh, and yes, I did point my head in the right direction. Uh, oh God, yeah. I mean, the worst is when somebody pukes up on a bus. No opening windows on there. Still remember up north, a horrific incident. This little kid at the front of the bus, he just evacuated his, it must have been his, his entire freaking body. He was like a power washer, just would not stop. 
Uh, and of course the bus driver gives zero f he just kept on driving and that gave the vomit momentum enough to uh, start trickling towards the back of the bus so we're all desperately scrambling up on our seats like the floor was actually lava what you want in an instant like that is a bus in like india for instance i remember they, they always had opening windows and i had to make use of that uh, one time and also another time when i was on a bus in india uh, the lad in front of me opened his window and spat out of it and of course, the wind then carried it. It came straight in back through my window and spat me right in my bloody face. I was less than impressed by it. Uh, but anyway, there's a couple of gross, random, pointless stories for you. There's me at the start of the episode. See, I'm in a bit of a rush. And then what do I do? I just waffle on for five minutes. And pointless stories about bodily fluids. Uh, next up, Wally says, Glasgow says hi. Hi, right back at you, Glasgow. I uh, hope you guys are all keeping well north of the border. It's been far too long since I've been up there. Really must uh, dodge up once the uh, the pandemic shiz is over. Get myself a slice of deep fried pizza and a pint of buck fast. Uh, on the subject of dodgy place names, Danny Boy says you need to shout out all the people that live in Bellend, Northamptonshire. So yeah, big up my Northamptonshire Bellend. I got I, I gotta look this up. This uh, <laughs> I've actually never heard of this place, but it sounds horrifically great. Love it. When you search for Northamptonshire Bellend, all you get is a stream of stories all about the road sign constantly being nicked and the residents being up in arms about it. Locals say it's a sad state of affairs, but a sadly predictable one as well, let's face it. Yeah, lots of uh, interviews with very, very unimpressed residents. Some angry looking Bellends right there. Bum and indeed Tish, tip your waiters. Uh, we've got another one here as well. W Scott says, why not explore the village of Intercourse, Pennsylvania? <laughs> oh yeah, sounds intriguing. Probably wouldn't want to stay there long though, just a quick in and out. <laughs> God, oh, sorry. Sorry, kiddies. That's the level that we've sung to now. Jeez, 52 bloody episodes of this absolute pish, honestly. And next up, Valentin Lewis says, is that a Samsung in your hand? And my brain has immediately finished off that comment with, or are you just pleased to see me? Uh, yes, it was a Samsung. It was uh, this Samsung, in fact, the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G, which I was testing out last week. Uh, my full review of that has gone live now here on Techspert, so go check that out if you like. Uh, next up, TC says, what's your longest daily driver held and for how long? Uh, well, that would undoubtedly be my very first mobile phone, which was the classic Nokia 3310. Had that more for all the way through uni, and then it also accompanied me uh, on my random Asian excursions as well. I was a backpack wanker for a while. Saw a bit of the world, puked up in a good bit of it as well. And I'll tell you what, the battery life on that thing was absolutely brilliant for, you know, your jungle trek excursions and all of that shenanigans. Did not have to worry about charging it up anytime. I remember when I moved to London, I then replaced that with, I believe it was the Sony Ericsson W850? Uh, something along those lines. Uh, to replace basically my massive, clunky, old, creative uh, jukebox Zen MP3 player. And that thing absolutely blew my mind, just adored it. The two megapixel uh, frigging camera, just like, wow, this is amazing, man. Then after that, I dove on board the smartphones uh, with the HTC Magic. And then after that, I started actually reviewing phones full time. So then I was swapping out every single week or two. Uh, next up, Yannick says, still throwing shades at Unbox Therapy. Um, what was I mean about him last week? I honestly can't even remember anymore. I mean, to be honest, you know, it's all just bits and giggles. Got nothing against the guy whatsoever. Um, you know, I don't know if his videos are any good or not. I certainly haven't watched any of them anytime recently. Uh, next up, Elliot says, what is the best Motorola phone for under £300? Well, Elliot, do I have the video for you, sir? Uh, I did a best Motorola phones roundup back at the start of the year, so go check that out. Um, I'd say for under £300, though, if you can't be asked to watch that video for whatever reason, uh, the Moto G 5G Plus is still one of my favourites. Good, good solid specs, good features and everything, and you'll be able to find that for a decent price now. Uh, next up, Archived Cafeteria says, Pixel 4a versus Pixel 5a. Should I wait for the 5a or should I just buy the 4a? Well, I wouldn't expect to see the Pixel 5a launched at least for another couple of months, uh, possibly even longer, because obviously last year the Pixel 4a was delayed with coronavirus shenanigans and all that stuff. So it kind of depends how patient you are. Uh, next up, James Smart says, it looks like one of your daughter's dolls has a broken neck. Uh, oh yeah, that would be uh, this one here, which is imaginatively called Dolly. Clearly my daughter inherited her creative talent from me. Yeah, that's not even the worst of it. She's gone through a bit of a uh, doctor's phase at the moment. So basically all of her toys are limping around on broken legs. They've got fractured hips, some horrendous cases of dysentery. Tell you what, if the social services caught wind, they'd be straight round. Uh, next up, James uh, says, I'm ordering the meat and tea light tomorrow, uh, Saturday. So by next week, I'll be watching your bald head on that phone. Good choice, sir. And hope it actually arrived in time 
for you to watch Techspert Weekly because I know certainly when I ordered my B10 T Lite from the Xiaomi website, it took over a week to arrive, which was slightly irksome, but hey ho. Uh, Nathan Meeks says, mate, you're such a weirdo. Uh, yeah, I take it you're new to the channel then. Uh, Niall says, how about a review of the best mid-range phones, please? I most want a decent camera and screen, but there are so many out there to choose from in the 550 to 699 range, hence I've still got my Pixel 3 XL. Uh, yeah, uh, there's quite a few good ones around that sort of price point, like the OnePlus 8T I still really, really like. The Samsung Galaxy S20 uh, Fan Edition 5G model with the Snapdragon chipset. And these days you can still get a good deal on Sony's Xperia 5 Mark II, which I highly recommend. Brilliant, gorgeous screen on that thing, perfect for audio and everything as well, so all your media stuff covered off. The camera tech's really, really nice as well. Uh, nice, good performance, solid battery life, the works. And we better finish up with this one. Thanks so much to everyone who commented last week. Uh, Cole the Great says, hey, here's a quick one, Chris. Arsenal or City, which are you? I'm looking for someone to make fun of. Um, as in, which do I prefer, Arsenal or Man City? Because the answer is kind of neither of them, really. Got to admit, if both of those teams got carried off right now by um, some random aliens and then subjected to a lifetime of invasive and humiliating anal probing, I wouldn't even really bat an eyelid. I am a Sunderland fan, though, so feel free to take the piss out of that. So yeah, as I say, a massive thank you to everyone who commented last week. Some really nice comments from everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, please do slap your comments down below, and I'll try and cover as many of those as possible next week. Uh, lots of review requests as well. Uh, mostly Samsung phones. Also a shout out for the Redmi K40, uh, which I will certainly try and cover if it comes out over here. And the Redmi Note 10 Pro, I've already uh, got my SIM inside, so I'll stay tuned for my full review of that next week. And speaking of next week, it's going to be a bloody busy one, hence the shortness of this show. Uh, so first off on Monday, OnePlus is planning some sort of mysterious launch or announcement. It's all very much under wraps so far. This is the only tease that we've had, suggested possibly a new space camera feature might hit OnePlus phones. Or with any luck, OnePlus somehow knows about an impending alien invasion that's going to reduce humanity into space dust, drifting forever through the endless void, silent, cold and alone. <sighs> And then following that, on March the 10th, Asus is launching its new ROG phone, Republica Gamers, so that's set to pack some seriously beefy specs and some proper hardcore gaming features too, so stay tuned for some hot video action with that more for wink wink, nudge nudge, etc. And then that's still not it, because then on Thursday the 11th, we've got Oppo whipping out its fresh new Find X3 Pro, which we already talked about back at the start of the show. Um, uh, so yeah, so hopefully that'll be some super sexy bit of tech as well, and hopefully I'll be bringing you some video action uh, on on the go then as well. So that's it from me for this week. Uh, thank you so much for uh, enduring another episode of Techspert Weekly. As I say, please do slap your comments down below and have yourselves a bonerific weekend. Did I already use the word bonerific? Probably at least two or three times. Uh, never mind who gives a shit. Not me. Love you.